coming. Just going to shake your hand. Shake your hand. Yes, that's a good introduction. Well, it's a it's a good way to start, I yeah. think. Yeah, Very because cool. you were just over there in the corner and you were feverishly writing, and I was I was a bit worried about interrupting you. Yes, <laughs> it was. So is, is that for tonight? Yes, that is uh, the creative process of doing a preview one night and then going, oh, those bits didn't work, I've got to change them, <laughs> and rewriting it for the night, for the night after. Right, so you did one last night. I did a double book because I did two shows in Edinburgh this year, and I, I thought it was a brilliant idea at the time. I thought I'd do the two shows back to back, I'd do the play first, and then I'd do the stand-up show. I hadn't banked on it being the most exhausting thing I've ever done in my life. Like, honestly, I feel like, God, people say nurses are it tough. <laughs> like that. Well, you have doubled your work, haven't you, I by have, doing yeah. it that way? And I'm sort of, like, with the play, there's not, there's not really a director. I've got a team of people, so I've got a brilliant script editor, and I've got someone who's helping out just, obviously, because I can't see what I'm doing. And then I've got someone, I've got a brilliant lighting designer, but I haven't got that person who goes, right, I'll take care of everything, you just turn up. So I still write myself as So well. you're still in charge of the, yes. of the play? Now, aren't you doing it so it's like... Three nights one and then four nights the other. Is that, is that uh, how it's working? I'm alternating nights, yes. Yeah. So there's three nights of the play, four nights of the stand up each week. Okay, and you're sitting now, you, the play is like, aren't they like stories? Like yes. It's four short stories, possibly five if you can make one of them work. Let's drop it last night. Right. So one's sort of in the. Once, it's a really nice idea, it's so technical that it's, you know, there's, there's no words in it at all, it's completely silent. Um, but it's incredibly technically complicated. Mm. And so I, I handed it over and went, can, can we do this? And everybody's gone, oh, maybe. <laughs> so we'll have to see. I suppose it's a thing where you, you want it to work well. If you're going to do it, you, you don't want to do a sort no, of half really. act kind of... And also we haven't started rehearsals yet. So I did the show last night. We were, I was on book which obviously means the performance isn't as good. And for that one, because there are no words, it was like, I can read you the stage directions, <laughs> but it's really not going to be the same. <laughs> it could be an alternative theatre piece, it I guess. Could, yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, they read out a phone book once, didn't they, in Edinburgh? And people paid money to oh, see yeah. that. So. All sorts of things. We can get away with anything in Edinburgh, I think. But yeah. this play, so it's just you, or is it... There's, there's more actors on stage No, as well. it's just me. Yes, it's a one-woman play. So um, the the format is that there's one story that uh, I play lots of different characters, um, and then there's another story that's just a, a story, just told like a Jack and Rory type thing. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a very very short sketch where I play both parts, but one of them is pre-recorded. And then for the final one, well, everything is a bit weird for the final <laughs> one. So I'm not gonna. I don't want to say too much about it. Well, yeah, you don't want to give anything away. No. I certainly don't. In this pre-Edinburgh time, but then your uh, your stand-up stuff yeah. is that is that going to be very different, or is it because I mean you do quite a lot of politi- political stuff? And yes. Well, do you know what, what I've realised is I think I've become a bit obsessed with vaginas. <laughs> I think just because there's so much misogyny around at the moment, and people are like, oh, I don't want to hear about this, and both like the the lead character in the play uh, in the story where I play lots of different parts is a gynaecologist. Right, and yeah. then there's also references to vaginas in the stand-up. I think I'm reclaiming the vagina for comedy. <laughs> it's been avoided for too long. The reclamation of yeah, the... Yeah. Maybe you doing. should have called your show that. Yeah. Or, well, or as a title to both of them. Yeah. And then you've got the two shows underneath. That would have been nice. I, um, I considered very briefly calling the stand-up show Nicholas Cage. As in Nicholas. As in no knickers. Cage. Oh, right. But yes, not not the actor, but obviously a pun on the actor's name. Yeah. But a cage with no knickers. <laughs> but um, it, you decided against. I decided against that, yeah. Because yeah. it, it, it was one of those things that you think this is a brilliant idea. No, this is a terrible idea. It was one of those ones. And also, you're using someone's name as well, so you kind of think. He'd have been fine. He lives in Bath. <laughs> yeah. He'd have loved it. Never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it'll be all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're doing preview shows of, of that mainly at the moment, yes. and then because uh, the play is technical, and I have a very, very good technician, um, it means that I have not been able to. I can't tour it around because there's loads of props and stuff, and and it, it really heavily relies on lighting, obviously, because it's a horror play. So it needs that atmosphere. I'm doing a preview tomorrow night, and when I booked it in, I said, "Oh, is there a lighting?" Room? 
rig or anything. They went, oh, yeah, it's fine. I did a stand-up preview there. And it's a lovely venue. But it's a working men's club bar. So it's going to... It's a light, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like, you can either have the lights on or off. So you're going, oh, all right, OK. <laughs> it's going to ruin some of the atmosphere. Not so much to play with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going, oh, like, we've got, we have got a birdie that we're bringing with us. And that's as much exciting lighting as we're going to have, I think. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so that's, that's, uh, that's all right. Yeah. So um, you're kind of doing sort of narrative stuff as well. Is that always something that you kind of... Because you've done the musicals yes. and things as well. Is it something that you're kind of drawn to? I love the narrative stuff. To be honest, if I'd have done it Edinburgh sensibly in a very career-minded way, I'd have written a, a bang-on hour of stand-up, possibly with a point about 47 minutes where I start crying over something. <laughs> Um, and I'd have been previewing it since January and, you know, all that sort of business. Because the play, I'll, I'll admit, is for me. It's a f- right. stupid one. I've never acted, uh, I've never played four <laughs> people in a story before, so it's a, I'm really out of my comfort zone, and it's, I just think that I wanted to do. Right. But equally, I wasn't prepared to do two shows in two venues because all that does is double your losses. Mm. If I sell every ticket to, to this show, I would still lose money. So I thought, I'm not doubling that. <laughs> So, yeah. You're not going to make matters worse for yourself. No, not really. That seemed insane. <laughs> I thought I've hired a venue for the month. I might as well just do what I want. But that's quite a good way of... I've never seen that done before. Mm. So I think it's quite a, a novel thing to do. I think it excludes me from every single award. Because you have to do a run... I think you have to do like 15 shows of the same show in the last two weeks. And I won't do that because I'm alternating, so... But then maybe that's not a bad thing because it's not even a possibility. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't mind. Right. I was very aware of this. I was like, <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's nice. Yeah, it's it takes pressure off. Yeah. yeah. So are you doing less writing now? Are you, um, are you concentrating on the performing side a bit more? Um, maybe? Well, I don't know. It's hard to say, isn't it? I mean, it depends what comes up. I've recently spent a week writing with Anna and Katie uh, for their TV show you know I was in the in the rehearsal room as their sort of joke monkey sat there <laughs> going oh let's change this word let's do this and that was brilliant I really enjoyed doing that and, but equally I think the thing is I think I'm a writer at heart who's a massive show off <laughs> <laughs> so the idea of just writing, I'm like, oh god, no. Look well, I mean, me. you had that, you had that year, didn't you, of of just solid, which yes. must have just taken it out of you a little bit. Yeah. Although a good discipline. It, it is a good discipline, and you know, I don't. It can. I don't want to sound like a prick or anything, <laughs> but I. You. Know, it's really nice to be an auteur, and you only really get to do that if you're writing and performing, um, because to just write something and. Like for TV, it'd be great to write or radio, write something that's my own thing. But the commissioning process is so frustrating, and you've always got people meddling at certain points. And to be honest, if you want to get a sitcom made at the moment, you really have to write it about a family. <laughs> they have to, something's gone wrong in the family, and they've had to move somewhere or something. They've and got a very specific thing in mind. Yes, yeah. and, and that's not, you know, I'm not saying. I, I, I couldn't do that, or you know, if I was part of a writing team, that would be really fun. But for me to go into to an office and go, well, yeah, what I really want to do is write a sitcom about a mum, and she's a bit, oh, she's a bit grumpy, and the dad he's having an affair, and all that. It's not really me. Well, yeah, because sitcom is kind of the pinnacle, isn't it? And when you pitch that, you want it to be, this is what I really want to do. Yeah. You know? I mean, I've got a thing that I'm working on, and I will hopefully have the script finished by the end of. Uh, end of August so I'm using Edinburgh to hone it and it's kind of I mean it's not it's not like community it's not like the same setup but I really love what community does it's really silly and weird but incredibly uh, warm hearted at the same time and also really easy to get into and I, I just you know the way you've got this mix of characters that will come together. I really, I like fam, I like the family sitcom where it's not a, com- a family. It's mm. the family that have come together of strangers. I, I've always really enjoyed that. Oh right, yes, yes. So that's sort of what I've been. I mean, it's my favourite thing at the moment. It's only really weird because I like I did really early gigs with John Oliver, and now you go, oh, God, John Oliver from Community. <laughs> it's really cool. I know he's in the Daily Show as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, but still, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, when you're writing for other shows, though, and they kind of do they just take your lines and and use them sort of in a, in a panel show or, or something like that? Is that how it works? Um, oh, well, I've not really not really written for the panel show side of things. I mean, right, to be honest, okay. I, I mean, I've written for 
Well, I've written for the news quiz, which is a panel yeah. show. I don't think of it as a panel show because it's so nice. <laughs> yeah. Ladies are allowed on it. It's not like a panel show at all. And the same with the Dilemma. Like my Radio 4 series has got a second series, which will be starting... We're recording one in Edinburgh, and then we're not actually starting again on it till January, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, in that sense, you do just chuck lines out. But equally, you know... There's a, it's really important to, to come up with good storylines and good characters. When I was working on Mongols, I'd write jokes. But also what you don't realise is if you're the person that's come up with a really good bit of plot, that's just as important as having that gag that everybody repeats. Yeah, the focus on the yeah. funny. Yeah. Is, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got to have good stories and good character as well, and I think that's really forgotten. And That's the thing that's going to keep people watching. Yeah, and yeah. you know, when you're writing for the Now show, no one really cares about plot or character, so maybe it's not as interesting for me personally. Mm. Now, we're going to get you to uh, make something out of plasticine. Okay. That's all right. That's a sort of new thing. I mean, we could have... I, I have gloves also, by the way, but are you OK? Oh, I'm fine, You'll yeah. be all right. Um, I mean, it's not been if, off anybody's bomb or anything, No, it? it hasn't. Okay. It hasn't. It's been... It's, uh, now, if I knew what we were going to talk about, I might have got you to make a vagina or something. Oh, but yeah, I could have m- done Maybe that. not, because the thing was, you had a musical a little while back. Yes. Um... I'm talking not gutted, the one before. Sister Psycho. Sister Psycho, yeah. that's the one. Where it, the main character was a, a, a nun lesbian robot. robot. Yeah, so I thought we'd make a robot. Okay. As a sort of tenuous right, link, that, okay? That works. So there you go. And Ben's got one too. Oh. And then we'll have a bit of time out and we'll compare afterwards. Okay. But you'll have to explain okay. your, your robot okay. afterwards. Are we doing okay. this now? Yeah, let's do this now. <clears throat> We've done our robot building. Yep. Should we start with your one? Your one's in the middle. Yeah. So talk me through, um, does he have a name or...? Um, do you know what? He looks a bit like my dog and I don't know what... <laughs> he doesn't. Obviously my dog's not a blue robot, but he reminds me of him, so his name's Buddy. Oh, my dog. that's quite sweet, actually. Yeah. Now, does he, now is there anything he can do or is he like a... He's just a, helps around the home. Well, he's or? got a, he's got a huge head, yeah. so he's obviously very good at uh, processing things. And he's got a little flat hand for carrying drinks, and also a laser eye for killing people. Laser eye as so well. He provides drinks or death, depending <laughs> on what you're after that day. <laughs> oh, depending on what you're after, not yeah. his mood. No, no, not his mood. No, no, no. Oh no, he's very good. Got, got quite a, a, a very intricate one from Ben as well, like a TV it's for a head, cool. is it? That, so it's like a rever- like, like a sort of Teletubby idea. Okay, well, that's cool. He's got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we could name it for him. Uh, we could name it after a Teletubby, I guess. Uh, what is the blue one? No, oh, I don't. I don't even know that. I don't. There is a blue one. There's a purple. A purple one. purple one. But that doesn't really fit. No. Dipsy. We'll call him Dipsy. Dipsy's fine. This one is a... Uh, now, this one had a function behind what it, you see. What's the function? Well, it's it's a, he's like a, a scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> he's a washing machine. Oh. Now, see, because um, when you're doing your washing, yeah. obviously you, you'll put it in the washing machine, which is a chore, yes. frankly. So the arms come forward I won't demonstrate because yeah. it will fall apart and picks up the washing puts it in and then when it's done it will then spit out your washing out. does it hang it up afterwards if, well I guess if there's a, a if there's a line well? is it a washer dryer or just a washing just machine just a washing machine yeah, it's gonna, to... everything's going to stink <laughs> it's going to spit it out it'll get left there in a pile well, then, then you deal with the washing how you would it hardly seems worth it if you've still got to hang it up putting it in the washing machine is the least annoying bit about doing washing it's the hanging up that is annoying <laughs> but then what you, you you then buy the other robot oh the accompanying robot yeah exactly this is a whole business plan it comes there's a lot of depth right there yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty And good. can it kill anybody? I suppose if they got in it. Again, if they if they get the, the downloadable content 
that's uh, available for my it. My mum once put, when she was 17, my mum put a boy in a, in a tumble dryer, <laughs> an industrial size one. Why? Why? She didn't like him. <laughs> and she was a frightening woman when she was that young, so mm. uh, they didn't put him in there for long. Well, uh, they didn't yeah. set it going. I think they might have set it going, really? but they, they opened it up. But just before he died. quite a small man. My mum loves this story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just before he died. Just before... There were no deaths that day. <laughs> but, but the inspiration behind, you know, the robot, the, the nun... Because you've done two musicals, haven't yes. you? It, I like that, to say written. Written? Yeah, rather than done. Uh, done, sorry. <laughs> I'm uh, a book, Mum! <laughs> well, did, did, you, did you act in Gutted? Mm. Or were you just... No, because um, we wanted to have a live band, mm-hmm. and it... No disrespect to any other female sketch actresses who go to Edinburgh Festival, but it was a lot easier to find someone who was going to Edinburgh who could act in it mm-hmm. than to find a bass player. Oh, really? Yeah. So uh, you, because uh, so obviously you're a, you're a bass player yeah, yourself. Yeah. So I played the bass in the live band. Oh, wait, do you have a grade in the bass or no? No. I'm self-taught. Oh, okay. I'd say you know probably. Probably pretty good grade. Pretty, you, can, you can put your own grade on your abilities. Yeah, that's, that's the good thing. Yeah, that's a great thing about the bass. Yes, yeah. And you, so, uh, fairly, I mean, I've never played it. Is it fairly basic? And, and is it a. It's a basic note, it's the most complicated instrument in the world. It's more complicated than a guitar. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> is it a self standing or a. No, it's an electric bass. Mm-hmm. I can play I can play a double bass because I learnt to play on a fretless bass. But um, I could never carry it anyway. I've got one of them, and you can get you can get upright sticks that are really nice as well. If I bought a new bass, I'd probably get one of those. But, um, right. Yeah. But yeah, my uh, my current bass does me fine at the moment. But you but you like the dark musicals? You like the? I mean, did you write the songs for it? I wrote the lyrics. I didn't write the music. Martin mm-hmm. White wrote the music. But yes, I wrote all the lyrics. Every single word on that stage was written by me, apart from the swearing that Colin Holt added. Oh, great. Yeah, so was there I'm, any swearing in your original? I don't really put a lot of swearing in stuff, to be honest. So, mm-hmm. no. There was, like, there'd be a little bit. What would happen is there would be maybe one swear word in the entire show, and it would be like, that's where the swear word is. It's really punchy, just one swear word. And, and, it, and it puts the emphasis on it yeah. as well. And then Colin would just add them to every scene. We've got, um, a, there's a school in Milton Keynes that have asked for uh, the rights to do gutted for two performances. Oh, yeah. And we've granted them a licence, because it's fundraiser, so we've granted them a licence for free. And because um, they listen to the podcast, it's on iTunes, uh, an orchestral version of Gutted on iTunes. And the teacher was going, oh, we're a bit worried because, you know, we've got to wait for everybody to turn 17 because otherwise they can't get away with the swearing. It's like, there isn't any swearing in the script. <laughs> You're just going on Collie Holt's performance. <laughs> it's kind of been branded as this dirty kind Yeah, of... that wasn't me that added that. <laughs> you bear no responsibility to that. Mm. But is that something, because they're quite dark musicals in a way. Yes, well, I mean, you're, you're probably quite more attracted to the darker themes. And... Oh, you do? Well, they're, they're dark in the sense that they are about people who kill people. <laughs> but none of them, I don't think they're that dark. Like, there's no... I think there's a real difference between being dark as in terms of death or something like that and punching down and I nothing I do does that there's no sort of ah look at those horrible people let's laugh at the disabled people let's laugh at the people who have a different ethnic origin or whatever Um, that doesn't happen in in my shows and I think that's a much darker way to take things so Mm. I stand by the fact that I don't actually think they're that dark Right, it's just that killing people just tends to be the thing. Hey, look, you know what? Yeah. That's what happens in graphic novels. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. exactly. Exactly. There's nothing wrong Death with that. happens all the time. <laughs> but is that something you want to go, go back to? Or the musicals yeah. or killing people? Or killing people as well, if that's... Uh... Well, you know, maybe maybe some people die in the show this time. <laughs> well. um, they are horror stories. There's definitely there's some necromancy <laughs> in one of them. Um, I, love, I loved writing the musicals. I absolutely loved it. Uh... It, they're just really hard to fund. I mean, I paid for Sister Psycho myself. The Assembly Rooms funded gutted, but that meant that I had to make a lot of compromises on things. Oh, what did you have to change? It, have to, it wasn't the content. Right. It's a very boring story. Okay. One of the big compromises that we made, which we shouldn't have done, was um, we didn't have any proper sound engineering. Right. Because it wasn't on where like, the director slash producer people were going, no, it's fine, we're spending the money where we need... Look, we've got your chorus. I don't need a chorus. I need people to be able to hear what's going on. <laughs> Things like that that made it quite frustrating. I mean, I, I doubt that would happen again. Mm. Um, because 
no one could be that stupid <laughs> to not give a musical proper sound engineering. But um, yeah, no, I really, really love doing it. Mm. And I'd, I'd happily do it again as well. And I've got like this a team of actors that I really love working with, which is great. Um, so yeah, it would be wonderful. But it's just a case of if I found that like even if you did it the most basic of performances, you still need a rehearsal time and you need a theatre space and you need you know there's still a lot of cost involved. If it's just you, then it's, it's just you. Much easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier. And you've only got yourself to rely on as well. Yes. Yeah, which can be a good or a bad thing, I guess. No yeah. one to blame. I mean, I, re- I do really love working with other people uh, uh, on stage. Um, An you know, ensemble kind of. Yeah. yeah, I find like there's something very lovely about stand up. But for me personally, when you're on stage with another, with other people, it's a lot more exciting. Just because you come together, you can never like, the the most you can hit as a solo performer is never going to be quite as brilliant as when you come together as a, a team. Because mm, there's so many individuals yeah, that are all giving it. You know, and yeah. I can't do everything, as <laughs> none of us can. Yeah. So when you've got people that can fill in the gaps and you can bring something together, I think that's a really wonderful thing. It's a really kind of exciting thing. Yeah. 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 Are you working on making Gutted a, a screenplay? Yes, we... Well, I say we. Um, <laughs> I, I am working <laughs> on doing it as a screenplay. Yes, a screenplay, uh, not a musical version of it. It would just be, it's a straight... Let's say straight, it's a comedy. It's a mm. comedy without any songs in it. Because right. yeah. as a musical... It's wonderful, but just the practicality of saying to someone, "Hey, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird story," and also the songs in it. It's never going to get. It's going to be, you know, repo the genetic opera. No one's going to make that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, you, you'll stick to it, and you're just writing that at the moment, and kind of seeing what, you, what yeah, comes I mean, out. Yeah, like, I've had I've had a, a couple of goes at it as drafts. So okay, yeah, yeah and you know. You, you, punt these things around and see again I guess because it is a little bit dark and also it's a bit I really like the fact that the actor playing the main person plays lots of other people as well but that's a real stylistic choice and it's the sort of thing that not everybody's going to be on board with it's that kind hearts and coronets business is um, that's what makes it not feel like a film because I think even though you can suspend disbelief as a, as a film you have to have that to have the same actor playing lots of parts. I mean, you don't want it to like, be like a clumps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It won't. It wouldn't make sense in no. that. Yeah, in that format. Oh, also, are you working on a kind of animated, an animated thing? Did I? Yes, me yeah. and Dan Tetzel and another man called Dan, who is the animator, are working okay. on an animated TV series. Yes, mm-hmm. again with some killing in it. My God, what's <laughs> with the killing? Well, killing is uh, it's a part of life, and you know it's. It, Maybe a topic you're drawn to. So why Possibly, why change yeah. it? Yeah, you know? but I have a, a great respect for life. So I don't know why I, I like this so much. <laughs> yeah. So was it a surprise? Sort of you started doing stand up and then all these killing themes came out. Like, who am I? Or it wasn't that big a surprise. <laughs> it was, you know, I was sort of slightly miserable as a child. So oh, right. Yeah. Well, I've always I mean, I've always loved stuff like that. I've always like loved like the League of Gentlemen and. And uh, like American Wolf in London is one of my favourite ever films because uh, of the scene in the cinema where all the people that he's killed come back to life and tell him to kill himself. It's one of my favourite scenes in any film ever. Right. I think maybe, and I saw that when I was four years old, so I think it had a lasting impact. There was something, something going on. Yeah. Yeah, because his friend, like uh, Jack, the the ghost who comes back, is really funny, and he's got these bits falling off him, and I'm, I always love that. I think it's really good. <laughs> you know, Evil Dead Two. That's a very funny film. Mm. Lots of death in that. It's yeah, it's the, the 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 line between sort of horror and and comedy, especially things like Psychoville. Yeah. As well, it's, they just they just keep coming up. Yes, you know. I I really enjoy that sort of thing. For me, that's what black comedy is. It's the sort of it's the grotesque mm. uh, rather than the, the horrible. Oh, let's you know stab a woman and then. Yeah. Rape. <laughs> Does it feature a little bit in your stand-up as well, that, those sorts of dark themes? Or do you get it all out of your system in the other stuff? Well, I was once described, my first stand-up show was described by the Sunday Times as being like a Nick Cave album recited by a cheerful would-be Dorothy Parker. So I suppose there are some <laughs> elements of that in there. Yeah. I don't do it on purpose. <laughs> just, I just want to find funny. Just, yeah. I yeah. can't, I, like, I've been... I've got a bit in the show this year about how I have tried to do observational material, but I just don't 
the things that other people notice. Hey, we've noticed this thing. I don't, I don't notice. That isn't what I'm thinking about when I go about my day. It's not the way my brain works. So I can't spot the mundanities and go, hey, we all notice this. The things that I notice and go, hey, guys, we all notice this. Everything else goes, like, <laughs> never, ever cross my mind. So. <laughs> but I think comedy from an outsider like that is actually where some of the best comedy comes from because it's like, oh, my, I haven't thought about that at all. You know, that's yeah. the thing that... that makes a lot of people laugh I think than... well let's hope so yeah. <laughs> otherwise this is going to be a long month <laughs> that's what you're banking on yeah. yeah and you're in the wardrobe so have you been in the wardrobe oh. yeah I've done um, I did a, a very brief read through of the play last month and then I did I was here in January as well mm. um, with Mark Culver just doing just knocking around bits of the stand up show because mm, it's a nice little room it's a very nice little it's, room uh, but it is very little. I think that's it is very little, but you know what? I'd rather be doing the play here than when I'm doing it tomorrow. <laughs> it's nice little room, but at least it's dark. Yeah. It's got the Workingmen's Club. I pull it off. The Workingmen's Club is going to be lovely. It's a really nice place, but I was a bit like... Uh, just a little bit... Uh, can't really build any suspense in here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for Thank coming. Thank you for having me. It's been me. lovely. And, uh, yeah, good luck with Edinburgh and everything. Thank you very Cheers. much. Yeah, Thank let's you. hope the whole of my life is a success. Um, <laughs> Cool, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Yes, thanks.